Um, Hong Kong Science Technology Parks Corporation is pleased to be the co-organizer of the conference. And I'm particularly excited that we are bringing the Hong Kong chapter to for the first time. Now the world is moving towards open banking. Markets like the European Union and the UK have already taken the lead by creating and passing their own open banking regulation. Hopefully that we are also moving into this direction. We expect to see lots of innovations through this open banking model. And certainly it will bring lots of opportunities to innovators in Hong Kong. Now let's uh, start off the conference and I'm glad to bring you these first sessions of the day, co-creating API ecosystems for financial services. And I'm very excited to have three distinguished guests with us today. Let me briefly introduce them. Uh, Mr. Richard Law, Chief Information Officer of HSBC APEC. And Mr. Travel Jung, Managing Director, Head of Digital and Ecosystems and Innovations, Institutional Banking Group of DBS. And also Mr. Licky Kong, Chief Information Officer of Hang Seng Bank. Together with our guests, we would like to provide an overview of the API legal <coughs> systems in Hong Kong, and more importantly, how we as a team contribute to it. Uh, each one of our guests will share their will with us. And before I start inviting them, I would like to share briefly with you how Hong Kong Science Park support API in Hong Kong. Um, the Hong Kong Science Park is a well mix of technology companies to explore open banking use case. Um, for an example, there are a few companies who is going to present today, including the Belovity in the API enabler area, Fun Park in the SME lending business, the Ready Travel in new customer acquisitions, Regtex in enabling remote business, and also Barco, who is focused in data for new product creations, and, uh, and also Daytex which is using data tracking for automations. Um, there are a number of companies also in working in uh, Science Park, working in this area. Um, we will also be working to work to fill up our portfolio by bringing in more innovative companies from other markets to share the open banking API experience with us. Um, Science Park is continually to put more efforts in promoting open collaborations with the industry. In fact, a few months ago this year, we worked with Hong Kong MA and host an API forum with 500 registrations from the industry. And today we are happy to support this industry conference. And in the coming quarter, we are going to roll out a series of FinTech workshops that will share the knowledge in this area. We will also continue working with the regulators and industry key stakeholders uh, in this area. Uh, today, we are also happy to announce an a new program which is called Open, X, Open for Excellence, in short, OpenX. This program aims to provide an assessment surface on the readiness of the park companies to work with banks when it comes to open banking collaborations. Um, the banks will be able to have a pre-assessment and be able to reduce some of their uh, subsequent work. And secondly, we are also hoping to generate new use case for open banking collaborations. Uh, we'll work together with the industry and the park companies to test out and prototype this uses, use case with banks. And we are also happy to have this program in collaborations with Hong Kong quality assurance agents. Um, together, this program will promote the good standards of companies and enable quick collaborations. We're hoping that this will benefit the industry, that there will be a efficient way of finding a third party service providers. And um, we'll be sharing some of this open X uh, later on today. Now to sum up, uh, Science Park is co-creating the ecosystems through our diverse portfolio and working with the industry and stakeholders and regulators in this area, and also rolling out new programs and also the FinTech uh, workshops in coming months. I hope this will give you an essential overview of how HKSTP is building the ecosystems with the industry. Um, with this sharing, I shall stop here and I'll invite my next guest, uh, Richard Law from HSBC to share with us. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Peter. Um, so uh, open banking. Well, uh, 
I think as, as Peter alluded to in his opening comments, um, open banking is, is actually quite new. I know it's been on the agenda and a topic of conversation for, uh, for a few years, but the reality is that around the world, there's less than 10 markets that have actually uh, enacted legislation and have active and working open banking uh, programs um, uh, in place. Now in this part of the world in Asia Pacific, um, we have three markets that are active right now with uh, Hong Kong, Singapore and Australia all having uh, passed legislation and now on the road, uh, roadmap to, uh, to be implementing the systems. Um, and those systems uh, are either coming online now or progressively coming online over the next couple of years. I guess from, from our perspective, uh, you know, there's a lot of, it's pretty easy to immediately react to the idea that your customer's data becomes freely accessible to the market um, uh, as, a, as a competitive threat. Um, but I think it takes, uh, it's really necessary to stand back and think about why open banking legislation has come into, uh, into, into being. Um, I put it down to what I call friction. Um, and, and the friction that we see is, is that um, politicians and governments and communities, I guess, have sensed that the traditional banking structures have, have made it hard for, um, uh, or slowed down innovation and created, made, created some difficulty for the users of banks and customers of banks to maybe get access to, uh, to diverse and new services as fast as uh, economies and governments would like, um, would like it to happen. And so uh, my personal view is very much that, um, that I think it's a real reminder to us that um, we have an obligation to understand the points of friction that we have in our relationships with our clients and the way that we serve them and use this as an opportunity to, um, to address those points of friction and speed up um, the, uh, the engagement that we have with those customers. So, so what do I mean by that? Um, the thing that we all know is, is that, uh, that things certainly aren't slowing down, even though the economy sort of ground to a halt globally with this, uh, this pandemic thing. Um, the reality is, is that uh, as somebody famous once said, that the change you experience today will be the slowest rate of change you experience for the rest of your life. Um, one thing that we know is that change is constant and it's going to keep happening. Part of that change is very much an evolution of what our customers require from us. Um, the traditional life cycles of a business, I'm in commercial banking, and the traditional life cycle of a business is very different to what it is today. You know, in the old days, we had a pretty predictable path for, uh, and old days is five or six years ago, um, we had a pretty predictable path for a business. You know, they would start a company, they would trade well in a, in a, in a local market, maybe they would open branches in a couple of other places in Hong Kong, the next thing you know, they're, um, you know, they're trading in a couple of other markets. Um, but the journey was reasonably predictable and we could model that. Well, now you can have companies that come into existence in one month, they're suddenly trading $25 million uh, a, a year in turnover because a Kardashian was wearing their sunglasses or something, um, and they're trading in 50 countries before you know it. And so what we know is, is that we need innovation to support this new rapid economy, and not all that innovation is going to come inside the bank. And so there are two opportunities for us. Number one is, is that we can work with very smart companies. We can work with uh, the innovators and those uh, organizations who might be better placed to address um, the, some of the changing needs of our customers and partner up with them to, um, to take advantage of the open API infrastructure to provide services. Um, and indeed, we can, uh, can be a participant in that market as a consumer of open banking services ourselves. So we sit here um, at the very early stages of the, uh, of the evolution of open banking um, optimistic. I think is probably the right word. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to to learn and listen to our customers, and and many of the things that um, that uh, I guess we have watched from the evolution of open banking in the early adopter markets has driven our own innovation and thinking in the products and services that we offer to our customers today through our digital online channels, our connected marketplaces, and uh, and community products. Um, I think the, uh, the, the other thing is, is that we will need to be very active um, and uh, involved in the API community, that we will need to understand how um, <coughs> the innovators are able to identify uh, requirements that we're not able to meet or the requirements that perhaps working together we can solve better for our customers. So um, yeah, that's my view on, uh, on open banking. Thank you, Richard. Uh, next, we'll invite Travel from uh, EBS Group to share with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, uh, glad to be here this morning. So um, about the topic of API ecosystem, uh, I'm very excited to share my thoughts. So first of all, uh, let me share that. Well, DBS, we are the best digital bank. We create respectful API relationships with clients and partners. 
to provide instant treasury service, consolidate liquidity insights, and support ecosystem growth. So this is really important to uh, DBS and my team that when we talk about API, talk about ecosystem, uh, we want growth, we want respectful uh, our relationship with the industry. Um, and yes, you can see my title, I have the uh, digital ecosystem and innovation. I want to share my view uh, based on these three words. Digital, we really believe that, I think uh, uh, just now which you mentioned about fiction. So we believe API is a channel that actually open up the banking uh, product or services or vice versa as well. We would like to uh, take some of the outside services and being part of our client journeys or partner or, or, or employee journeys. So we believe uh, journey design is very important. If we want API ecosystem to be successful, because at the end we need to sell good experience, uh, uh, good services to the uh, market. And the, um, because of this uh, mindset, we have been very active for uh, Hong Kong STP and our uh, markets in China, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Asian countries. Well, covering like, well, uh, uh, property management and uh, health and uh, uh, partner with several um, technology software firms that using API to offer frictionless and uh, great experience along the journeys. So ecosystems. I remember uh, when I looked, when I heard about this word several years ago, I remember what uh, Bill Gates said. What is the ecosystem really about? I make some money, uh, 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 Microsoft make some money and the partners and the ecosystem make more. So it's very important for DBS, for myself that, well, API, we would like to open up our product, our service to our partners and make sure they can make money. And we are very open to have, uh, in DBS, we have something called the 40, uh, discover, define, develop, and deploy uh, framework. We are very uh, open to partner with uh, the industry so that solution specific to define the solution. And the last, another thing is uh, co-create, as I briefly mentioned. Uh, we, we, we believe that uh, just now we mentioned a uh, lot of technology company, data company. So how can we offer nowadays like SME segment? How can we offer them, well, instant uh, 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 loan so that we need a uh, real-time or leave real-time credit approval? So the uh, data from outside and also uh, leveraging the federated learning technologies are very important. So kind of I see API is part of the ecosystem enabler with the right proper uh, design thinking, solution mindset, and using other technologies are important. And next will be the innovation. About the innovation, uh, DBS has been investing a lot uh, to evolve the technology infrastructure. So of course, from uh, uh, on-prem and then now basically uh, move to the cloud with, on AWS. And also in terms of products, uh, I'm sure other banks as well on the cash APIs. And um, we also uh, has been investing in the trade API because we see that uh, there's a lot of companies are actually uh, SME or large corp are moving their uh, uh, offices and companies from, uh, I shouldn't use the word move, but probably shift their investment from China, Hong Kong to Singapore and Asian countries. So trade become a very important part that they want instant financing. They don't want paperwork. So this is another part we, it, it requires ecosystem to work with us in terms of data, credit approval, or even the uh, ID verification, right? How can we leverage API for ID verification authorization? These are very important part of our thinking. Uh, and lastly, I briefly mentioned about blockchain. And uh, we see that, uh, well, DBS is part of the Anchin uh, 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 part, uh, bank partner. So blockchain across the whole Asia part, uh, the, the blockchain to enable the Asia pet trade is very important. But with blockchain, you still need API. Then you need API to uh, fetch the data, push the uh, credit approval, and the, uh, uh, work with certain tech fin 
on the scorecard credit model information as well. So I think to conclude uh, our understanding, our view on uh, API ecosystem. So again, API is a very important enabler. We are uh, very open and willing to work with the uh, industry and uh, the technology firms and solution design providers that we can design very smooth journey and instant experience for uh, banking services. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Next, I would like to invite Nike from Hengshan Bank to share with us. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, it's great to hear uh, Richard and Trevor talking about openness uh, in the industry and the development. Uh, if we look at the banks, uh, in the old days, people go to banks. So you go into a branch to get your banking services. Uh, and and uh, people are starting to uh, use call center. And uh, obviously, uh, in the recent years, more about digital and with the COVID, uh, people use mobile. So people who use banking services are going into the bank. And uh, in, in, in our mind, I think we think banking will change in, in, in the future. Uh, people will not go to the bank. Instead, uh, bank, uh, banking services should be integrated into uh, individuals' lifestyle. Uh, banking services should be available in when the customer wants it, uh, where they want it, and how they want it. So API become this e uh, ecosystem or infrastructure that enable uh, what they call uh, the, uh, banking 4.0 uh, and integrating uh, banking services into individuals' lifestyle. And uh, let me give you an example. So uh, maybe uh, one day uh, on a rainy afternoon, you try to finish work uh, and you try to go out, you have an appointment in half an hour, you need to rush to some uh, place after, after work. And you look at your uh, weather forecast on your on your portal, uh, and you see uh, amber rainstorm going to uh, maybe red rainstorm. You know, going down, you know, going downstairs, uh, and then trying to queue for a taxi is going. You're going to be late for your appointment. And uh, if you imagine you uh, uh, in uh, with your concern, you integrate your portal login with your banking login. Your bank start to offer you partnering with a limousine uh, service or taxi taxi service, offer you a, a ride or 50% off. Or maybe your VIP, they offer you a free ride. And that kind of customer experience, as Trevor said, right, uh, that's most important. And that's what uh, creates stickiness with the customer. Uh, and uh, as we look towards uh, 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 how do you enable that, uh, the API become a, a, a important part of uh, how, how do we do that. Uh, in, in Hang Seng Bank, uh, we are doing the uh, uh, Hong Kong MA open banking phases one or two. Uh, we have samples whereby we uh, provide uh, property valuation services, uh, mortgage services through our API. That's uh, phase one and phase two uh, API offering, uh, working with uh, property companies uh, to use, use those API. Uh, similar to what uh, our, our corporate bankers are doing in HSBC and DBS. We have cash services, payment and collection. We're working with online brokers. We're working with a logistic company to offer this. Uh, we also have uh, FX, uh, loans, and also basic account opening APIs available. Uh, to be honest, the, the adoption is very mixed. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, as Trevor said, uh, this uh, ecosystem co-creation, that's very important to us. And we, we're doing a test and learn approach in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong has, is, is not easy. In my opinion, Hong Kong, to develop API, uh, there are a few challenges. Uh, firstly, Hong Kong is just very convenient, right? You, you go out and do shopping, uh, and you go, you, you probably do your daily shopping. You don't go out and shop for one week or two weeks. And therefore, uh, to create the type of like, uh, customer experience using API, the need for that, uh, in Hong Kong, it's very different from uh, countries like Australia or US. Uh, the second thing is uh, uh, in banks, we uh, protect our trust and safety very importantly. We have a different uh, risk appetite towards uh, how do we operate. We have a lot of procedures within banks to uh, execute projects or offer services. Uh, and I guess uh, for customers, uh, they put money in the bank, they expect the bank to be really safe. Uh, but you look at the tech side, particularly fintech, uh, you do agile, you do test and learn, you make mistakes and learn from it. It's a very different culture. So in my mind, I think uh, we're trying to work through how banks work, work with uh, tech companies. 
and and that's that's not easy at all to bring uh, two different cultures together. I think the last thing which is a challenge is uh, in Hong Kong there are not there are not, not a lot of technical services available, and uh, for a large corp when we work with them, sometimes depending on which department you work with, uh, IT development budget uh, those are challenges. And to put two API together to talk to each other, you do need that IT investment in there. Uh, and people will start questioning, is, is it worth doing, right? Uh, it's, it's not a, a small investment. And if you think about small, uh, medium enterprise, it's even more difficult. Uh, it's, uh, there's not a lot of uh, tech company available who provide a uh, 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 basic services easily allow SME to integrate with bank. So there's a lot of uh, technical challenges, uh, available skill set, available of solutions in the market. Uh, in Hangzhou, we're trying to do that, uh, doing a test and learn approach. We're very open to uh, work with uh, our partners, uh, the corporate customer, the merchants, uh, and provide a, a better customer experience uh, to the consumers. And with that, we're trying to uh, uh, work, work through. Uh, but uh, the, the journey is not, uh, is not easy. Uh, we're working towards that. Uh, and we're working hard to try to uh, overcome these uh, challenges and obstacles in Hong Kong. As Richard said, uh, there's a lot of friction in the system. And uh, as an industry pa uh, practitioner, we just uh, yeah, carry on. And we, we believe that the API will be uh, the future of uh, what uh, our guest speaker is speaking in terms of creating that ecosystem, creating that uh, new proposition, and taking uh, banking to a different level. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is excellent sharing. A couple of keywords I pick up. Number one being Richard mentioned about fiction. Yeah. And then uh, Travel talk about the ecosystems and how the ecosystems benefit everyone. And of course, like he talked about the trusted partner. Perhaps let me just uh, touch base on the trusted partner a little bit. Um, we are working with the industry as well as the Hong Kong QAA to roll out this Open for Excellence program. The idea is really through this program with the support from the industry and also QAA to certify the third party technology service provider. So there will be a few uh, um, criteria that we'll be developing with the industry so as to have a pre-screen. I will use this word, pre-screen of those uh, service provider to certain standards such that when they are engage with the bank subsequently the the banking side will have certain uh, confidence on them and of course you know understand the bank also have their own uh, assessment criteria but then with this program our aim is to reduce this uh, assessment path or the accreditation path so as to accelerate the potential collaborations that is one thing and on the other side, on, and on the other hand, it's about the ecosystems. Um, HKSTP is working closely with the industry as well as the regulators to nurture these ecosystems. Uh, through working with the industry, we are seeing there's a lot of uh, innovators out there who are willing to participate in this open banking API uh, journey. So, uh, and we are also seeing it's not just the local entrepreneurs, but there are also entrepreneurs from around the region and around the globe who are landing in Hong Kong. And we are supporting their landing in Hong Kong to create this a much bigger and richer ecosystems. Now, the third area also our guest mentioned is about the phase three and phase four of Hong Kong MA's open banking uh, API uh, timeline. Um, Again, we are seeing there's a challenge, you know, in terms of rolling out the phase three, phase four. But uh, we are also equally confident that we are working together, the whole industry, that working together, we will be able to accelerate the, the opening and the delivery of this phase three and phase four journey. Now, before we conclude this section, a very last question that I would like to ask our guests perhaps with a simple or in-depth uh, 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 responses. How do you see the banking industry in the next 10, 20 years? Do you think there's, uh, on one hand, very well-established banking you know, institutes 
are there. And now on the other hand, there are emerging technologies as well as emerging business models coming up. So uh, I would like to, you know, perhaps start with Richard and then uh, Travel and then Nike. Either a quick response or just one or two statements, you know, just to, to give a glimpse of the future for our audience. Thank you. For us, I'll start with you, well, thanks for, uh, for, in rugby terms, they call that the hospital pass. You're the guy who's about to get tackled pretty hard. Um, I'm not going to get Trevor, let Trevor get away with saying that DBS is the best API bank out there. Like, you can't say that, mate. So, <laughs> everybody knows it's HSBC. Um, um, look, so really simple question, but I think uh, um, I've been in this internet game for a long time. I started in 93. And the thing that I've noticed is that we all get very, very excited about um, huge transformational change and disruptive change and things like that. And certainly we've seen it. We've seen it across just about every sector of, uh, of the economy. Um, in the case of banking and open banking, the thing that, that just sort of sticks in the back of my mind is that ultimately beyond everything else that we do, we're dealing with people's money and we're dealing with their trust. And so whilst I do think that we the of services uh, industry, there are elements that, that we don't, that we need to pay due attention to, we need to make sure that we fully respect as we undertake this transformation journey. And key to that, respect of the fact that we're dealing with people's money and respect that they come to us for trust. And so I think that there is a, a, a role to establish long-standing organisations that um, that have built trust and the capability to look after um, our customers' uh, wealth and investments. Um, the means that there's a, an opportunity for us to evolve into the next thing that is very much about um, providing the scale, providing the infrastructure, providing the trust, providing the resiliency. Um, you know, 154 years old and HSBC has weathered a heck of a lot. Um, and we've experienced, we've seen even through this latest global um, crisis, a couple of the new um, uh, virtual banks in the UK having to issue statements saying that they are not 100% certain that they can remain a going concern because of the adverse effect of these conditions on their business. And so I think there is a role for the large financial institution. I think we must listen and learn to our customers. I think we do need to fully look at the, at the non-technical dimensions that define the way the financial services industry looks. And we need to look at building very strong partnerships, as, as everybody has said, so that we can best prosecute on behalf of our customers and continue to build value in, in new and more efficient ways. Thank you, Richard. Travel. Well, I, I want to say, first of all, I, I don't, I'm not a, well, as a, my career from banker, I from technologies, 24 years in technology company. So when, when I heard your question, I, I think that, well, one of the reasons DBS attract me to join is uh, Live More Bank. Uh, I, DBS is pushing to this direction, but still a long way to go, to be honest. And if you ask me maybe five years, 10 years from now, with my years of working experience in Shenzhen and Beijing, I will assume, I expect if I am the consumer, or I am the corporate. I, I just don't need to worry everything. Everything will be predicted. Everything what I like will be delivered to me, maybe in terms of loan, in terms of uh, delivering goods. So everything will be connected. Yeah. So I already see some uh, very scientific video, right? You order a pizza in Italy, it's already delivered from, by drone to you, and then they just scan your face, payment done. Uh, I think that, will, that should be the world yeah, to me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do agree with Richard and Trevor. I, I think uh, on Richard's point about uh, uh, bank working with customer and then uh, establishing a trust that's important. So uh, at the moment, at least for myself, I would not put my pension into a tech company. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will keep it within the bank that I can trust. I think, I think in, in the next uh, years to come, that will continue to be there. But to Trevor's point uh, about customer experience, that's important, right? Uh, the speed of those API ecosystem and the tech will drive banking services. And how do banks uh, work with uh, the partners to deliver that uh, seamless customer experience, that banking 4.0 concept of banking everywhere. So it's not, uh, as I said earlier, not you going to the bank, 
the bank offering services at where, how, and when you like it. And that customer experience will be king, and that will be the differentiator in the next five to 10 years. Excellent. Thank you, Lucky. And again, you know, that concludes our sessions. And my big thanks to all the guests for their insightful sharing. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.